What's up guys, this is Marcus from Studio One Expert and today I wanted to have a look at building a custom de in Studio One. Now for those of you who are not familiar with what a de is, it's basically a frequency dependent or frequency based compressor limiter. So what it basically does is it handles specific frequencies in speech or vocals that can tend to be a little bit aggressive or piercing. Now there's certain consonants that lend themselves to being quite aggressive. So some of them would obviously be an S, so any S's, and we also have T's. So some of these can be really, really harsh and can build up in frequencies and they can be a little bit piercing. Now one of the things that I see posted a lot is that Studio One doesn't have an actual de that's included in the plugins. And I think the main reason for that is because we can actually build a de using the compressor. So what do I mean by that? All right, we have a basic voiceover sample here. And this clip was provided by Joe Brookhouse. Uh, so thank you very much for that. So what I'm going to be doing here is we're going to be having a look at this clip here and we're going to be adding a de -esser. So right now I've got a fat channel on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to disengage the fat channel for a second. And now what I want to do is I'm going to go to my Personas effects over here. I'm just going to scroll down and what I'm looking for here is the compressor. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag this compressor right on here. Actually, I'll just drag it in front of the fat channel. And I've actually got a preset that I've created. So we're gonna start with that as a starting point and we're gonna have a look at what we're doing here. Okay, so you can see that in here, I'm actually using the internal sidechain filter. And then you can see that I've got some filters set here. So between 2.27 kilohertz and 7.27, that's where we're gonna be affecting. So let's have a quick listen to this over here. My inner diva wanted to flip my hair and soak in the limelight. Okay, so what I wanna do here is let's have a quick listen to the inside here. So I'm just gonna to go to listen to the filter here. Okay, so these are the actual frequencies that we're listening to. So what I can do here is I can bring this up a bit. So you can hear those S's. You can hear that it gets quite uh, harsh in those particular areas. So what I can do is I can also dial up this part over here. Okay, so those S's are really what we want to take care of. So I'm going to go ahead and play that one more time. Okay, you can really hear it build up there. And we can actually see it visually in the waveform too. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take it out of listen filter. And now we have some compression settings that I've already set up ahead of time. And these are, you know, they're a pretty good starting point, but what we might have to do is adjust the threshold. My inner diva wanted to flip my hair and soak in the limelight, all the while making sure. So that's taken off a lot there. That was taken off 12 dB, we kicked it out. So let's bring our threshold down a bit here. My inner diva wanted to flip my hair and soak in the limelight all the while making sure they got my best side for their cameras. My inner diva wanted to tell them that I was, in fact, Mikey. Okay, let's listen to that one more time. My inner diva wanted to flip my hair and soak in the limelight, all the while making sure... Before? My inner diva wanted to flip my hair and soak in the limelight. My inner diva wanted to flip my hair and soak in the limelight. My inner diva wanted to flip my hair and soak in the limelight. So it's just taking the edge off that S, just shaving it off. So let's look at another different way that we can tackle this. We have another way that we can take care of this, and that would be by, if I switch to my cutting tool here for a second, so I'll just switch to three. Let's click the end to release ourselves from grid mode for a second here. I could actually take this event here, and I could select that, and I could actually manually bring this volume down. Now that's another way that we can deal with it. So from here, and I could back up a second. My inner diva wanted to flip my hair and soak in the limelight. Now sometimes this can be really, really transparent too. And to be honest with you, I like to do a combination of both doing some clip gain or event gain, and also using a little bit of a de -esser, as opposed to just using a de -esser on its own. So that's another option we have. So let's go ahead and undo that. And the last option I wanna have a look at here is this is not necessarily the intended purpose for this plugin here, but we could use it, and that is the multiband dynamics plugin. So let's go ahead and drag in the multiband dynamics plugin, 
and I'm going to stick it on the very first insert slot here. And now what I want to do is I want to just activate one band. So for instance, this band over here, let's solo this out. Actually, you know what? We'll probably use the high band. That'll probably be a better band. And let's have a listen to this. And we can adjust our crossover point here. Okay, so what we can do is we can just bring this band in. So now with this particular band selected over here, I can go ahead and make adjustments to my ratio, uh, my thresholds. The advantage of this being that we have the double thresholds here. I can make an adjustment to my knee here and my attack and my release. So let's start making some adjustments here and see what we can get. Okay, so there would be an example here. Now let's take this out of solo mode. My inner diva wanted to flip my hair and soak in the limelight. As opposed to? My inner diva wanted to flip my hair and soak in the limelight. Okay, so that would be using the multiband dynamics. Now personally, my preference over these two would probably be to go with the compressor. And one of the interesting things that we can do here is when we've used a de preset that we've created or we've turned our compressor into a de one thing that we can actually do here is we can rename this. So instead of being compressor, I can actually name this to be de -esser. So now in terms of our signal chain, what we see visually on our plugins would be actual de -esser. Anyways, I hope you guys got something from this and we'll talk to you later. Cheers.